I'm thankful for the opportunity to share a word from the Lord that is close and dear to my heart. But before we go into the word, let us talk to the Lord of the word. Let us pray. Father in heaven, I'm so thankful for this opportunity we have to study your word. And I pray that you will, through the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, touch each viewer, each listener. Speak to me, speak through me, and speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I know all of us, if not most of us, have a favorite text of scripture or favorite chap a favorite chapter. I'm almost sure for many people, John chapter 14 is probably one of the most favorite chapters, one of the most recited, at least the first three verses in the Bible after John 3.16. It was in the upper room where Jesus has this discourse with the disciples and says to them, as he's instituting, replacing the Passover with the Lord's Supper, and he says to the disciples, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus says. And if I go, I shall come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Jesus' desire was that the church, the Christian church that would be the result of his labors and that of the disciples after his death, his resurrection and ascension would prepare for his ultimate glorious soon return. And that is God's desire that we would be with him where he is in the kingdom of heaven and the earth made new. So Jesus has just finished teaching the disciples the relevance, the importance of the emblems, the body represented by the bread and the blood of Jesus that was to be shed. Not too long from this moment, a few hours, in fact, was, of course, symbolized by the grape juice. And, of course, Jesus washed their feet. And uh, you know what? Peter, when Jesus got to him, he said, no, you can't wash me, Lord. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, if I don't wash you, then you cannot have, be, have any part in my kingdom. And then he says these words, well, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Well, Jesus said, he that is clean or he that is washed is clean already and needeth not but to wash his feet only. And he said, the words that I've spoken to you. Those words is what made the disciples clean. But nonetheless, as Jesus finishes in the upper room and makes his way down through the hushed and quiet streets of Jerusalem, it's late at night. As they go down under the moonlit, starry sky, they go over the brook Kedron, making their way down to the Garden of Gethsemane, a place where Jesus had visited many times and found quiet time to commune with his Lord. The word Gethsemane means an oil press. Gath means oil press. And Chemin means a, a vet. So here Jesus would be pressed almost to the point of death. But there he would win the battle and he would be resolute. He would be set and his eyes would be on the prize of the goal to save all men, even at his loss, even at his demise, even at his death. And so Jesus says now to the disciples as they get to the Garden of Gethsemane, tarry here and watch and pray. And then he goes into the inner precincts of the garden with the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. The three of them had been with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. 
And when he comes to this place, he tells them to tarry here, watch and pray. And as he goes forward, he begins to pray and commune with the Lord. But I want you to know, as they made their way into the Garden of Gethsemane, they came to a place where they saw a, a vine. And this vine was so clearly lit by the moonlight with its tender shoots and branches growing on the trestles. And, and I've entitled our Bible study, Connected to Christ. As Jesus gives this as an amazing example of what it means, an illustration, what it means to be connected to Christ. The Jews thought very highly of vineyards and grapevines. Um, they saw in the fruit of this tree wonderful, powerful illustration of what God had given to the prophet Jeremiah and, and Isaiah, that God has planted a goodly vine. Sadly, through disobedience, it brought forth wild grapes. Nonetheless, Jesus had promised before they got to Gethsemane, he had promised the disciples in the upper room. He says, I will pray to the Father. John chapter 14 and verse 16 says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So when you think about this word helper, or comfort, as Jesus says in chapter 15 and 16. The word in Greek is parakletos, and it means intercessor or advocate. So the Holy Spirit was promised to aid the Christian church in forming and forging a connection with Christ. And so as Jesus points to this vine that was hanging on the trestle. It was a fitting symbol about him because he depended upon his father, the husbandman. For as he came to show the love of the father, it was through his connection with his father who would supply the power and strength for him. And that same power and strength he has promised to us through the Holy Spirit. And so in Jeremiah 2.21, it says, Yet I had planted a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of the strange vine unto me? He's talking about Israel. Israel had rejected him. Already Jesus had come to the point where he was facing Calvary. Already he had cleansed the temple for the last time and spoke of it as being left desolate. Already he had come into Jerusalem on the triumphal entry and had declared the amazing prophecy of Matthew 24. But here Jesus speaks to the disciples. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me in John Chapter 15, he says here, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So just as Jesus had depended upon his father, so he tells the disciples, he tells the Christian church that he is the true vine. His father is the husbandman or the vine dresser. And then he says, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. So the farmer always plants, whether it be a vine, whether it be a tree, olive tree, pear, apple, whether it be corn, whether it be wheat. The sole purpose to plant is to receive a harvest. Fruit. And of course, from that fruit, you would now retain some fruit. 
to plant again for the next season. And of course, the rest will sustain people. So, so, so Jesus says in verses 3 to the disciples, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So it's the word of God that is able to cleanse our heart from the selfishness and the sinful desires. In fact, it was David who said, How shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed there according to thy word. And so Jesus says in, in verses 4, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So clearly here is the, the process by which we can bear fruit. It is only as we are connected to Christ the vine. He goes on to say here in verses 5, I am the vine. He repeats it again. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, Jesus says, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So just as the branch needed the living sap from the vine in order to grow, Equally, it would need the power of connection to bear fruit. Jesus says in verse 6, If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Of course, that clearly illustrates the severing of one's connection with Christ and those who will finally be lost. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus speaks of those who will be gathered as branches and cast into the fire. And he says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But verse 7, again, Jesus repeats the all important instruction. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done Unto you. And then Jesus says this here in verse 8 By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Not just fruit, but much fruit. So will you be my disciples. And then Jesus gives to us what will be the result of this connection with Him. He says here, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. So here, abide, 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 abide. That is the operative word here in John chapter 15. What does this word abide mean? The Greek is meno, and it means to stay. It means to continue. It means to endure, to remain, to tarry, to stand. Uh, Jesus says, for us to stand, for us to endure, for us to tarry, we must be connected to him. So that connection is only possible to the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to read to you some quotations from two books that I love to read. The book Desire of Ages. And also the book Steps to Christ. I believe these are really gems of what Ellen White wrote for us as God's end time people. Um, this classic, The Desire of Age and the Life of Christ, uh, is, is still the, the best book, as said by the Library of Congress in the United States, on the life of Christ. So it says here, in um, Desire of Ages... And I'm reading here on page 675. 675. I want you to understand here what Jesus is saying. And um, listen what it says here. It says, The connection of the branch with the vine, Jesus said, represents the relation that we are to sustain with him. The scion, which is a little shoot that you graft in, 
is engrafted into the living vine and fiber by fiber, vein by vein, it grows into the vine stock. The life of the vine becomes the life of the branch. So the soul dead in trespasses and sins receives life through connection with Christ. By faith in him as a personal savior, the union is formed. So the soul, the sinner, by faith in Christ as a personal savior, it says here, is strengthened. His emptiness is to Christ's fullness. His frailty to Christ's enduring might. Then he has the mind of Christ. The humanity of Christ has touched our humanity and our humanity has touched divinity. Thus, listen to this one here. Through the agency of the Holy Spirit, man becomes a partaker of the divine nature. So here, clearly Jesus says that this is how we are to be connected to him. This union of Christ, once formed, must be maintained. So it's not a, a once-off connection, but it is a continuous. That's why the word abide means continue, remain, stay. Uh, it says here, this is no casual touch, no off and on connection. The branch becomes a part of the living vine. It says here that the communication of life, strength and fruitfulness from the root to the branches is unobstructed and constant. Separated from the vine, the branch cannot live. Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. Abiding in Christ means a constant receiving of his spirit, a life of unreserved surrender to his service. And that's why you can understand Jesus said that when the Holy Spirit has come, he will abide in you forever. Because as we maintain our connection to Christ through the spirit, who's the intercessor, the advocate that connects us to Christ, then we recognize that Paul says in Galatians 5 verses 22, that the fruit of the spirit is love. We will bear fruit and that love will bear peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, meekness, temperance, faithfulness. It says the life of the vine will be mag manifest in fragrant fruit on the branches. He that abide me, said Jesus, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. When we live by faith on the Son of God, the fruits of the Spirit will be seen in our lives. Listen to this statement here. A profession of religion places men in the church, but the character and conduct show whether they are in connection with Christ. And that is the most important message I would like to leave with you. Because Jesus said, if we are not connected to him, we will not bear fruit and we are going to wither and die. So I want you to understand that Jesus wants us to have this connection. Notice what he says here in 677. God desires to manifest through you the holiness, the benevolence, the compassion of his own character. It says here, the Savior does not bid the disciples labor to bear fruit. He tells them to abide. So here Jesus is saying, listen, without me, you cannot bear fruit. You just need to abide in me. That's all. Your connection with me will be the guarantee that you will bear fruit. Jesus says it is through the word. Ellen White says it is through the word that Christ abides in his followers. Someone is certainly asking the question, um, how am I to abide in Christ? Clearly here it says it is through the word that Christ abides in his followers. The same is the same. This is the same vital unit that is represented by eating his flesh and drinking his blood. The words of Christ are spirit and life. Receiving them, you receive life from the vine. And so as, as we look at the instruction from Jesus here, we are reminded that if we don't connect with him, we will be lost. Now, for those who don't have a connection, Jesus says that every branch that does not bear fruit, he will cut away. But those who bear fruit, he actually prunes. He, 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 he cuts to grow. 
He takes off all the excess foliage. He takes away all that which is unnecessary. He, he, he takes away all the hypocrisy and, and gives us a real connection. The pruning will cause pain, but it is the father who applies the knife. And it is his purpose that we will bear forth much fruit. It is through God's word that we are connected to Christ. His followers need to have that strong connection with Jesus. I want to read again here from a book, Steps to Christ, here. Um, it says here, Your growth in grace, your joy and usefulness all depend on your union with Christ. It is by communion with him daily, hourly, by abiding with him that we are to grow in grace. He's not only the author, but the finisher of our faith. And then here, Ellen White says, do you ask, how am I to abide in Christ? How do I remain in Christ? In the same way as you received him first, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. That's Colossians 2 verses 6. The just shall live by faith. Martin Luther discovered that as he walked up the Scanta Scala stairs in Rome. And here we are told it is by faith that we become Christ. And by faith we are to grow up into him. And it says here by giving and taking, you are to give all your heart, your will, your service. Give yourself to him to obey all his requirements. So this is surrender. Now, how do we go about surrendering? Here in the same book, Steps to Christ, page 70, it says, Consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. Let your prayer be, Take me, O Lord, as holy thine. I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. She says this is to be a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. And she says, surrender all your plans to him to be carried out or given up as his providence shall indicate. Thus, day by day, if we do that, we will be giving our lives in the hands of God. And thus, our lives will be molded more and more like Christ. Let the mind dwell on his love, upon the beauty, the perfection of his character. Christ in his self-denial, Christ in his humiliation, Christ in his purity and holiness, Christ in his matchless love. This is the subject for the soul's contemplation. It is by loving him, copying him, depending wholly upon him that you are transformed into his likeness. Friends, this is how we abide. That's from Steps to Christ, page uh, 70, paragraph 2. This idea of abiding in Christ conveys an idea of rest. You know, in Matthew 11 verse 28, Jesus said, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And, and that rest is found in yoking up with him in service, in ministry, in mission. He says, take my yoke upon you, verse 29, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. Friends, this rest, the heart must find complete rest upon Christ, and it must be most active in labor for him. In constantly beholding him, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. The apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verses 18. And so day by day, if we are through the word connected to Jesus, our hearts will be drawn out to him until self is lost. And so Jesus promised that it is through the spirit in John 16 verse 7. It is through the spirit that, the, that, that we will be led into all truth. It is through the spirit that we will understand of him. Henceforth through the spirit, Christ was to abide continually in the hearts of his children. Their union with him was closer than when he was personally with them. All that Christ was to the disciples, he desires to be to the church today. And Jesus' last prayer in John 17 was that we would be one with him, even as he 
is with the Father. In conclusion, the only way to grow in grace, the only way to abide is to connect as Jesus did. Pray for the daily baptism of the Holy Spirit. The only way is to the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Matthew 4 verses 4. It's also in Mark 4 verse 4. And so we need to recognize the only way is prayer, Bible study, and ministry. Ellen White says in conclusion, the only way to grow in grace is to be disinterestedly doing the very work which Christ has enjoined, has enjoined for us to engage. And that is to the extent of our ability in helping and blessing those who need our help. So my dear friend, I want you to know that Jesus wants you to bear much fruit. And if you will take time to connect with him, he has all the time to connect with you. I pray it will be your experience. As I connect with Jesus, I have seen how he has worked in me to bear fruit. As I have done evangelistic series and seen people connect with Jesus and their lives changed and transformed. Um, friends, it is the most exciting thing. And I want to say to you, don't be discouraged if you have disappointed and fallen. Get up again. A righteous person falls how many times? Seven times and gets up again. And so maintain that contact. Reconnect with Christ and let him through the Holy Spirit lead you. Work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Let me pray with you and for you. Father in heaven, thank you that it is your desire to connect with us, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will help us to make time in a daily surrender, daily Bible study, daily communion through prayer, and then ministry, witnessing for you. Bless each one that has heard this message. I pray that we will surrender and connect to Jesus. I ask in his precious name. Amen.